All right, then uh, we'll get started. So in the previous class, uh, we were discussing about uh, linear equations. So we have seen variety of uh, linear equations, all types of linear equations. And then we have also seen word problems. So that is one very big section. And in, in this focus area, what we call as the heart of algebra. So next we are moving on to linear inequalities. By the way, um, let's see what an inequality is. Just like an equality is some mathematical statement, inequality is also an, a mathematical statement. For example, a numerical inequality, say three less than seven. This is a, a numerical inequality. Of course, you would have seen some simple examples in your school. Now we are moving on to linear inequalities. A linear inequality is that kind of inequality where you have linear expressions which are separated by an inequality sign. Okay, so you have an inequality side on both sides of the inequality. What do you have? You have linear expressions. For example, you can have 2x plus 3 here. You can have, say, a minus 2x minus 6. Okay. You can have 2x plus 3 here. You can have a constant. Right. You can have some constant here. You can have a linear expression. So you can have linear expressions, you can have constants, you can have zero, but these are separated by an inequality sign. Okay, they're not separated by an equality sign, they're separated by an inequality sign. An inequality sign will be of five times less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, and not equal to, okay. Cool. So a linear inequality will look like a linear equation, which you have encountered so far. But instead of the equality sign, it will be replaced with, a, with an inequality sign. An inequality sign will be of these forms. All right. Just like we were solving a linear equation, we can solve a linear inequality. Okay, just like we, we saw that uh, a linear equation has a solution. Similarly, we can say that a linear inequality can have solution. Okay, generally, a linear inequality will represent a large set of values. Okay, a linear inequality generally will represent a large set of values. For example, if we take the simplest, simple case of a linear inequality, x less than 3 x less than 3. See, take the simple example of x less than 3. x less than 3. So this is a linear inequality. What does this mean? What does this convey? What does this convey? So let's, let's, take, uh, let's take x less than or equal to 3. What does this convey? This conveys the information that your x is a number which is less than or equal to 3. It can be 3 and it can be any number smaller than 3. Right. So how do I, uh, so what is the solution of this equation? It, the solution of this inequality is any number which is satisfying this condition. Any number which will make this condition true. So that is our solution to inequality. So can you tell me some number which will satisfy this condition? Can you, can you give me some number which will satisfy this inequality? Any number. Any number. Please uh, give me any number that will satisfy this condition. Yeah, two. What about others? Yeah, two. Others, others, please, please do respond because you know there is no way I can look at your face, I can see your expressions, I can. The only way to know that you're with me is through chat. Uh, 
uh, Anjali and uh, Prisha. Anjali, are you with me? Yeah, two is some number. Two is, num two is some number which will make the statement true. But is two the only number? Is two the only number? That will make this inequality true. It can be one, like it can be zero. It can be negative numbers. You know, if you take any negative number, it's going to be less than or equal to zero. Got it? Yes. So, you understand that this inequality has a large set of values as its solutions, not just single value. Although all of you have given me the same number, a large set of values will represent its solution set. Okay, solution set. Solution set is the set of all values will, that will satisfy this condition or this inequality. So, there are two ways to represent this uh, solution. Okay, one way is using number line. Okay, one way is using number line. So, you just draw a number line. You just mark the number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, all those numbers you mark on the number line. Now, it says x less than or equal to 3. It means any number which is equal to 3 or less than 3 will satisfy this condition. So, the numbers which are less than, lesser than three are represented on the left side of the number line. Left side of three on the number line. Left side of three. Left side of three on the number line. You understand this? So we are going to represent these numbers as this way. So I just put a dot. There's a dot at three to indicate that three is also included. Three is also a solution. Three is also a solution. Is three less than or equal to three a true statement? Three less than or equal to three. Is this a true, true statement? Is this true? Three less than or equal to three. Yes, definitely. Okay. Three less than or equal to three. Okay, so that statement is true. So it is understood that 3 is also included in the solution set. Any number on the left side of 3 is also included in the solution set. So you're going to represent this on the number line as the numbers which are um, 3 and left side of 3. So is this clear? The number line representation? The number line representation of the solution set? Please tell me quickly. Yes or no? Yes, yes, others. Yes, x less than or equal to 3 is num represented on the number line as the numbers. 3 and all numbers to the left side of x is equal to 3 on the number line. And the point you have to carefully note here is these numbers are just 1, 2, minus 1, 0, uh, not, not only these numbers. There are numbers which are in between these integers. See, when you draw a number line, you just mark only the integers. You mark positive integers, you mark 0, you mark negative integers, but you have to remember that there are numbers in between these numbers. For example, 2.99. 2.99 lies somewhere here. Minus 0.5. Minus 0.5 some lies somewhere here. Okay. So these numbers are also included. Don't forget that. Okay. Don't forget that these numbers are also included. Yes, got it. Okay, so it's not just two is a solution, one is a solution, zero is a solution, minus one is a solution, minus two is a solution. Of course, these are solutions, but on top of that, 
any number between 2 and 3, between 1 and 2, between 0 and 1, they are also solutions. They are also solutions. Of course, between any two integers in the number line, you can have so many uh, real numbers. They could be real rational numbers. There could be irrational numbers. For example, root 2. Root 2 will lie somewhere here. So is root 2 a solution of this inequality? Is root 2 a solution of this inequality? Root 2 is a solution of inequality. Yes or no? Is root 2 a solution of the inequality? Is root 2, root over 2, a solution of this inequality? Tell me yes or no. Yes. Others? Yes, yes. Right? Yes, okay. Now, this can be represented. So, this can be represented in another way. And that is the representation of a set. Okay, it is called the representation of a set. So, in a set, in set itself, this is what we call a set builder form. Okay, set builder form. So, how, how is this right? How is this right? This is right as the set of all, the set of all x such that x less than or equal to. Okay. So, it simply denotes that all numbers less than or equal to 3 will form a set of numbers, okay? And that set is represented in the form of a set builder form, set builder form. I hope uh, you've come across the term sets in smaller classes. Sets represent the collection, okay? Sets represent the math uh, collection, well-defined collection of mathematical objects. These could be numbers. Uh, these could be any, any expressions, okay? For the time being, we have considered a collection of numbers. And this is what we call a solution set. The only thing you have to note carefully is, um, other than integers, any rational number can any any number that falls in that number line between these integers can also be a solution, right? And now, if 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 somebody is telling you x is less than three, x is less than three, what does it mean? What does it mean? X less than 3. So here you cannot include X is equal to 3. Here you cannot ex include X is equal to 3 because when you put X is equal to 3, 3 less than 3 is a wrong statement. 3 less than 3 is a wrong statement. So how do you represent these num numbers on the number line? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, Minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. Okay. You just draw a circle here. Draw a circle. Okay. This is how you represent. So what that what does that circle indicate? What does that circle indicate? It indicates that the number three is missing. Number three is not included in the solution set. The number 3 is not included in the solution set. So any number less than 3 forms a solution set. It is going to have an infinite number of numbers in the set. Right? So similarly, you can have uh, x greater than 3. So x greater than 3 can be represented as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, here, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. So, 3. Numbers greater than 3. Numbers greater than 3. Will represent the numbers which are on the right side of 3. 
right side of three. Okay. Of course, when you have x greater than or equal to three, what happens? When you have x greater than or equal to three, what happens? You have to put a dot here to indicate that three is included, to indicate that three is included. So these kind of inequalities are what we call simple inequalities. Simple inequalities. These are just simple expression in, in um, corresponding to very uh, just one uh, inequality. Just one inequality. Now we can have compound inequalities. We can have compound inequalities. For example, somebody is telling you that. 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 7. What does this mean? 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 7. What does this mean? This means that your x value is between 2 and 7. It says it's a collection of two inequalities. One inequality says x is greater than or equal to 2. Okay. Another inequality says x is less than or equal to 7. Okay. And these should be satisfied simultaneously. So we represent it with an and. Okay. It means that both these conditions should be satisfied simultaneously. So 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 7 simply means that your number has to be greater than or equal to two. The number has to be less than or equal to seven. So this is what we call a compound inequality. These are two single or simple inequalities combined together using an and. So when you say and, it simply means that both these conditions have to be satisfied. Okay. So on number line, how will you represent these numbers? You just draw the number line. And by the way, uh, can you give me an example? Can you give me a solution to this inequality? Please think of a solution to this inequality. Yeah, others, others, others. Any, anything, anything, please, please. Yeah. Is seven and two, seven, are seven and two included? Are seven and two included? Yes. What about 6.9999? Yes. What about 3.5? Yes. What about pi? Pi? What about pi? What about root uh, 5? Root 5? These numbers are all included, okay? Don't be under the impression that you're just selecting integers. Unless specifically um, said unless they say you have to specifically specifically look for integers by default it means all real numbers okay between two and seven otherwise they will mention that you have to pick the integers the question will specify that you are looking for integers okay otherwise it simply means that real real numbers so of course these numbers can be represented as a real number line as so i i mark zero one two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here is minus one, minus two, minus three, right? Now let's mark the inequality. The numbers between two and seven. Two and seven. So there is a dot at there is a dot at two. There is a dot at seven to indicate that. 2 and 7 are included in our solution. So can somebody tell me how many solutions do we have? How many solutions do we have for this inequality? How many solutions do we have for this inequality? How many solutions do we have for this inequality? How many, how many do we have?
others others just think think i just mentioned uh, how we take the numbers how, how we take the inequalities it's not just six see of course two is a solution three is a solution four is a solution five is a solution six is a solution seven is a solution apart from that all numbers in between them are also solutions so how many solutions do we have how many solutions do we have we have we have we have please tell me no no not six solutions see apart from these numbers yeah there are infinitely many solutions we have an infinite number of solutions we have an infinite number of solutions we have an infinite number of solutions got it you understand my point apart from 2 3 4 5 6 7 numbers like say 2.1 2.17 3.14 so all this kind of numbers all this kind of numbers will also be there in the solution sets hope this makes sense hope this makes sense yeah of course it it may not be the case always it may not be the case uh, always that you always have an infinite solution for example if somebody tells you consider this x greater than or equal to 2 and x less than or equal to 1 x greater than or equal to 2 and x less than or equal to 1 what does this mean what does this mean x is greater than or equal to 2 and x is less than or equal to 1 what x has to be greater than 2 and x has to be less than or equal to 1 at the same time see and represents what at the same time simultaneous okay simultaneous simultaneously true it has to be or if you have learned sets i hope some of you would have learned sets in terms of set this represents a intersection intersection which means you are looking for the common numbers common numbers satisfying both inequalities first inequality is x greater than or equal to 2 to second inequality is x less than or equal to so can you tell me what is the solution to this inequality what is the solution to this inequality can you give me a solution one solution at least can you give me a solution to this inequality this compound inequality of course it's a, see olivia you are telling me x is equal to a solution is a solution i want answers from others then we'll discuss i request others to answer olivia says x is equal to 2 is a solution what about others others please 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 any solution that you can think of for this compound inequality which says x is greater than or equal to 2 and x is less than or equal to 1 others robin trisha anjali give me an answer please
others anything or if you cannot think of any solution say just say no solution there is no solution if you cannot think of any solution so anjali saying x is equal to 1 is a solution others 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 1 x is equal to 1 okay let's see x is equal to 2 when you put x is equal to 2 we have to satisfy x greater than or equal to 2 and x is x is less than or equal to 2 when you put x is equal to 2 the first condition is so you have to go with 3 <laughs> So she has to go with three. So when you put x is equal to two, what happens? When you put x is equal to two, what happens? This condition is satisfied, but this condition two less than or equal to one is two less than or equal to one is two smaller than one. No, that's not true. That's not true. So this is not a solution. This is not a solution. What is the logic here? We are connected by ands. Which means both the condition needs to be satisfied. Both, both. Okay, got it. If I put x is equal to one, if I put x is equal to one, x is equal to one. This condition is satisfied, but one greater than or equal to two is not satisfied. So that is also not a solution. Now, if I put x is equal to three. If I put x is equal to three, this condition is satisfied. But three less than or equal to one is this true? Is three less than or equal to one? No. So there is no solution. There is no way on the earth you can have a number x satisfying both these conditions. Got it? You understand what I'm talking about? Yes. So it may not be the case always. It may not be the case that uh, you always have an infinite solution to an inequality. You can have no solution. Okay. You can have no solution. Got it? You may have a unique solution. You understand this? Because there is no number. There is no number that will simultaneously satisfy both these conditions. So again, I'll just represent this with number line as well. X greater than or equal to two and X is less than or equal to one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to represent each of these individual inequalities, simple inequalities, by a number line. And since they are connected by and, I'm going to take the common part, the intersection. Okay. So the first inequality and the second inequality will be represented on the number line. So I have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. The first inequality x greater than or equal to two is represented as Two and numbers on the right side of two. Yes, and the second inequality x less than or equal to one is represented as the number one and all numbers on the left side of x is equal to one. Now you just overlap these two. Do you see any common points? You just overlap. You just. Try to overlap these two in your minds. Do you see any common points? No, you don't see any common points. Since they are connected by and, and simply stands for what the common points, the intersection. Okay, got it. Yes, cool. Have you have you seen these kind of inequalities in school? In your algebra one, you would have seen, right? Algebra one. Uh, 
by the way, which class do you guys uh, take up algebra one in grade eight? Or is it grade seven or grade nine? Grade eight. Okay. So you do all grade nine. Okay. Okay, fine. Cool, cool. Yeah. So that is uh, a compound inequality that was combined using and. Okay. Now suppose we combine them using or. Or. Okay. Suppose we combine this using or. Say for example, somebody is telling you that x is greater than or less than or equal to 2 or x is greater than or equal to 5. Can you think of some number that will satisfy this kind of inequality? See, you have to remember these are combined by the word or. When they are combined by or, you have to take the union. Okay, you have to take the union. Union means the, there will be a solution set to this inequality. There will be a solution set to this inequality. You have to take the complete solution set. Okay, you have to consider both the solution set. Okay, not the common point. We are not talking about common point. Common point was the previous case when they were combined using and. Here we are combining them using or. When you are combining two inequalities using or, what do you have to do? You have to take both, both solution sets. So can you suggest some solution to this inequality, this, this uh, um, compound inequality? Can you suggest some solution? Any, any solution, any number you can think of that will uh, be a solution to this compound inequality? Please give me a number. Please uh, try and think of some number that will satisfy this inequality, please, please just think of some number. X less than or equal to 2 or X greater than or equal to 5. Okay, here is the idea. Please, please listen carefully. Please listen carefully. Here is the idea. So zero here, zero, zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six. Now, a compound inequality will consist of two or more inequalities. So I'm going to plot those individual ones on the number line. I'm trying to find the solution of x less than or equal to two. X less than or equal to two can be represented as the set of all numbers including 2 and all the numbers on the left side of 2. Right? Yes, yes, yes. Now, x greater than or equal to 5. Listen carefully, listen carefully. x greater than or equal to 5. Any number starting at 5 and on the right side of 5. Now, when they are combined using or Okay, we are going to consider both solution sets. We are going to consider both solution sets. So the combined inequality x less than or equal to 2 or x greater than or equal to 5 will be represented as all numbers on the left side of x is equal to 2 and all numbers on the right side of x is equal to 5. You understand the concept? So for the individual inequalities, you have their own solution sets. For the compound inequality, when they are combined by the letter, the word or, it simply means that you have to take both cases. Got it? So one is going to be a solution. 
six is going to be a solution. Minus four is going to be a solution. Seven is going to be a solution. In the previous case, we were looking at the numbers which will satisfy both. And and and. So both needs to be considered together as the intersection, the common region, the common solution. Okay. Here it is the union. You just combine the solution six. Got it. Does this make sense? So when you take R, you take the union. Union is what? You take both of them. When you uh, say and, you take intersection. Intersection means what? You take the common region. Here you, here you take both regions. In and, you take the common region. Got it? Make sense? Yeah. So this is the basic idea. This is a very basic idea. This is the very basic idea we, uh, we are discussing first. Okay. So let's see some questions. I have already shared the sheet with you, but let's try to solve this now. Okay, I have just updated the, updated the sheet. Okay, I'll share them once again. I'll share the sheet once again because I have uh, updated it with some more information. Okay, we have discussed all this now. Question number one, which inequality is shown by the graph? Okay, in the graph, a specific part is marked. So what does that region represent algebraically? By algebraic, uh, algebraically means what? Using an inequality. So what is the answer? Just look at this graph, I mean the number line and tell me what is the answer? There is a dot at one, so it means one is included. And all numbers greater than 1 are selected. So it means what? X is greater than or equal to 1. So which is the solution? Which is the answer? What is the answer here? Yeah, it is B. It's clear, right? C. The options may look similar. It, of course, the, it's their job to confuse you, right? It's just their job. When they set a question paper, it is their job to make sure that there are confusing options. They all look very similar. Next one. Which, are the, which is the inequality shown by the graph? So you have minus 2. And then you have... Uh, all the numbers to the left of minus 2. So minus 2 and numbers lesser than minus 2. But minus 2 is not included. Minus 2 is not included. So what is the answer here? What is the answer in this case? Yeah, it is going to be C. It is going to be C. Yes, cool. What about this one? What about this one? Yeah, we have 3 included and all numbers to the left of 3, right? So x less than or equal to 3 is the solution. Cool. Which is the inequality shown by the graph? So we have minus 2 and all numbers to the right side of minus 2. Right side of minus 2. But minus 2 is not included. Minus 2 is not included. All numbers to the right side of minus 2. All numbers greater than minus 2. All numbers on the right side of minus 2 will be greater than minus 2. So, greater than minus 2. Got it? Just see it's greater than minus 2. 
So right side represents the numbers greater than minus 2. Right side of minus 2. Yeah. Here, which compound inequality is represented by the graph? Of course, the region between minus 2 and 2 are selected. Yeah. Here you can say that it is minus 2 less than x less than 2. Actually, this means that this includes two inequalities. x is greater than minus 2 and x is less than 2. These are combined. I'll show that once again. See, when somebody is telling you that minus 2 less than x less than 2, this com contains two inequalities. One is x greater than minus 2 another is x less than 2 and of course it is understood that it is understood that uh, they are connected by and okay it is understood that they are uh, connected by and so how do you represent this take the number line x less than 2 i'm going to represent x less than 2 so we have 0 we have 1 2 3 4, 5, 6, we have minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5. Now all numbers greater than minus 2, all numbers greater than minus 2 will be represented by this region. Yes. And the second inequality is x greater than minus 2, x greater than minus 2. So you draw the number line. Oops, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Sorry. See, I made a mistake. It's x less than 2. We are talking about x less than 2. I, I took this one as the first one. I took this one as the first one. x less than 2 is all numbers 2 and left side of 2. Two and left side of two. And the second inequality will be x greater than minus two. Minus five, minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So x greater than minus 2, greater than minus 2, I mean, sorry, greater than minus 2, how, 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 uh, how, how can you represent x greater than minus 2? How can you represent x greater than minus 2? Minus 2 is not included and we are going to take all the numbers on the right side of minus 2. Right side of minus 2. Minus 2 and the right side of minus 2. Now they are combined using and. So when you're going to combine those, these two by and, you're going to take the common region. So you just overlap these. You just overlap these and think of the common region. You overlap these and think of the common region. What is the common region? What is the common region? The common region is going to be the numbers, listen carefully, please listen carefully. The common region is going to be all numbers between minus 2 and 2. Numbers between minus 2 and 2. Numbers between minus 2 and 2. So, this will be the common region. You see this? The first region is represented this way with a hole here, with a circle here. The second region is represented in this way. And so the common region comes out as this region. This is our common region. 
Okay, and that is represented here. Hope this makes sense. Yes. Yes. Please let me know. Yes. So when they are combined by and, you have to take the common region. When they are combined by or, you have to take both regions. You can take both. So that was about this question. So what is the answer here? What is the answer here in this question? The answer was minus 2 less than x less than 2. Now next question. What is the answer in this question? Question number 6. What is the compound inequality represented by the graph? Yeah, your x is less than 1, but x is greater than or equal to minus 3. So you have to choose those numbers which are satisfying both conditions. Right? x is greater than or equal to minus 3 and x is less than 1. Yes, others. Now next question. Which is the compound inequality represented by the graph? Minus 1 to 3. Minus 1 and 3 are included. So minus 1 to 3, minus 1 and 3 are included. What is the solution? C, right? C. C is the solution. Yes. Which is the compound inequality represented by this graph? Minus 1 to 5, but minus 1 to 5, but uh, minus 1 is, sorry, 1 to 5, sorry. 1 to 5, 1 to 5, but 1 is not included. 1 is not included. 5 is included. So you write 1 less than x less than or equal to 5. 1 less than x less than or equal to 5. 1 less than x less than or equal to 5. Now question number 9. Which of the following is a solution to the inequality x less than 1? Which of the following is a solution to the inequality x less than 1? Which, which is the solution? Which of the following is the solution? Yeah. X less than 1 means choose the number which is less than 1. Simple as simple as that. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. I mean, the, these two came out the same. So minus 1 is the solution. Okay. Minus 1 is the solution. Which of the following is the solution to the compound inequality? 2 less than X less than 5. 2 less than X less than 5. Yeah, C is the answer. Because it has to be between 2 and 5. 2 and 5 are excluded. 2 and 5 are excluded. So this is basic stuff. So I have already shared the sheet with you, but I have updated this. I will just share the updated sheet. But this is just basic idea. But uh, the main idea is actually about uh, solving the linear inequalities. So how do you solve a linear inequality? How do you solve a linear inequality? Solving linear inequalities. So remember, we, we solve linear equations, right? So, can you think of the process we did there? Can you think of the process we did there? When you see an inequal e equation, when you see an equation, when you see an equation, what is the strategy we used? First of all, we will 
expand all the brackets okay using the distributive property etc okay we'll expand the bracket if there are any brackets we'll expand them then what will we do then we will combine the like terms if there are any like terms then we'll combine them okay then what will we do then we'll collect the variables to one side the numbers on the other side right say suppose you have something of this sort form 3 times 2x plus 5 plus 5x plus 6 is equal to 2x plus 3 what is the first process if there are any brackets you expand the so this becomes 6x plus 15 plus 5x plus 6 is equal to 2x plus 3 and the next step what will you do you combine the like terms so we have 11x plus 21 less than or sorry equal to 2x plus 3 in the next step will what will you do you bring 2x to the left side 21 to this side so basically you're collecting variables to one side collecting the constants to the other side so we have 11x minus 2x is equal to 3 minus 20 so we have 9x is equal to minus 80 so x is equal to minus now in the next step so when when you when you have x is 9x is equal to minus 80 what is the next step you're dividing the entire expression with 9 right you're basically looking at what operation is acted on the variable and you you're undoing that operation you're undoing that operation right You have nine x is equal to minus eight. You see that nine is being multiplied with x. To get rid of that nine, you have to divide by nine. So you are undoing that operation by dividing by nine. So you are left with x is equal to minus two. Got it? Yes. This is the procedure we followed for linear inequality, linear equations. So we are we are going to use the same procedure for linear inequalities. Here, the only difference is equality was being replaced by inequality. Okay, you can do the same procedure. Okay, what are the procedures? You expand the brackets. You combine the like terms. you collect the variables to one side the constant to the other side you divide or multiply add subtract to undo the operation that is done on the variable to isolate the variable and get the solution right so all this can be done for a linear inequality as well okay but there is a catch there is a catch see when you are combining uh, when you are uh, expanding the bracket that's fine when you are uh, combining the like term that's fine when you are uh, adding the same numbers on both side that is fine when you are subtracting same numbers on both side that is fine but when you are multiplying or dividing there is a small difference i'll tell you what listen carefully listen carefully suppose you have an inequality which says 3 less than 7 suppose you have an inequality which says 3 less than 7 now if i this is a true statement right this is a true statement right so if i add the same constant on both sides if i add same constant on both sides nothing will happen say if i add 1 on both sides this will be 4 less than 8 this will still be true okay this will still be true now if i subtract the same numbers say suppose i'm subtracting 2 from both sides so this will be 1 less than 5 again that is a true statement we are generating a true statement once again but when you're dividing there is a small difference when you're dividing there is a small difference you have to listen carefully say suppose we have 4 less than 8 we have 4 less than 
say you are multiplying both numbers with uh, 2 so 2 times 4 is less than 2 times 16 this is perfectly fine 8 is less 2 times sorry 2 times 8 this is perfectly fine 8 less than 16 this is perfectly fine but if you are multiplying with a negative number then you are multiplying with a negative number what happens when you are multiplying with a negative number this is minus 2 times 4 this is minus 2 times 16 uh, sorry minus 2 times 8 this is going to be minus 16 this is going to be minus 8 now tell me what happens now tell me what happens 4 less than 8 is a true statement. Now, if I go and put the less than sign here, this doesn't make sense because minus 8 is greater than minus 16. Minus 8 is greater than minus 16. Right? Why minus 8 is greater than minus 16? Minus 8 lies on the right side of minus 16. Minus 8 lies on the right side of minus 16 on the number line. Minus 8 is a greater number. So, what, what really happened here? When you multiplied with a negative number, what really happened? When you multiplied with a negative number, what happened is the inequality sign flips. Okay? The inequality sign changes. The inequality sign changes. You understand what I'm saying? When you are multiplying an inequality with a positive number, there is no problem at all. But when you are multiplying an inequality with a negative number, there is a big problem. Okay? You get what I am saying? See this example? 4 less than 8 was a correct statement. But when you multiply with minus 2, the numbers became minus 8 and minus 16. And where do you see minus 8 and minus 16? Minus 8 is on the right side. Minus 16 on the left side. The smaller number is minus 16. So the inequality is flipped. Inequality sign is flipped here. Got it? Tell me yes or no. Yes. Have you, have you, under, you, you, I hope you have understood this before. This concept is clear before. From school, you have understood this concept. The idea is very simple. When you are adding or subtracting, there is no issue. When you are multiplying or dividing, as far as it is positive, there is no issue. But when you are multiplying with a negative number, there is a problem. Now, let us see the division as well. Division as well. Let us see the division. So, in this case, we were multiplying with 2 in one case. Multiplying with minus 2 in the other case. Okay. Now let's try to divide the entire expression with 2 and minus 2 respectively. Okay. I'll just take 2-3 minutes. Then we'll wind up. Okay. Just listen carefully. If I, if I had 4 less than 8. Now if I try to divide this number by 2. Then that is fine. 2 less than 4. There's nothing wrong here. But if I have 4 less than 8, and if I try to divide it with minus 2, what happens? What happens? We have minus 2 here, and we have minus 4 here. Now what happens? What happens here? What happens? What, what should be the appropriate inequality sign? What should be the appropriate inequality sign here? 
It has to be the flipped one, right? Yeah. Minus two is greater than minus four. Minus two is greater than minus four. Hey, do not get confused with the signs, okay? Greater than, less than. Okay, do not get confused with that. And for the number line, it is easy to remember because you know the numbers on the left side are smaller. So when you compare minus two and minus four, minus two and minus four, how will minus two and minus four be? You have zero here, you have minus one here, minus two here, minus three here, minus four here. The smaller number is minus four. The smaller number is minus four. Got it? So idea is very simple. How do you solve an inequality? To solve an inequality, you just do the same process like solving an equation. You, you expand the brackets, you combine the like term, you separate the variable, or you do, you do all sorts of uh, operations. But when you're dividing or multiplying with a negative quantity, you should be careful. So that's the only difference. When you're dividing or multiplying with a negative quantity, the inequality sign will flip. Got it? So the only difference is this. Okay. Yes. Yes or no? Yeah. I, I'll uh, share this sheet with you. We already solved this problem. But uh, the data is up updated. The important points, the synopsis part is updated. That is one thing. Secondly, I will share some simple problems which you can try on your own. And definitely we'll solve it in the next class. I will share some simple problems also with you. Okay, just try and solve it. Take some time and try to solve it. Okay, and be very thorough with the number line. Okay, be very thorough with the number line. So because it's easy for you to think in terms of number line. All right, then see you in the next class.